The design of the 2022 Formula 1 regulations were deliberate with the aim to increase closer racing. One decision was to increase the height of the front wing to supply that volume of air to the floor. This air from the floor then billows out the back high and narrow. It was established in a previous video that air entering the floor was clear of turbulence. The sloped inlet leads to the flow inherently being pushed out to the side without the aid of the four floor fences. Now approaching the halfway point of the first season of these regulations, most teams have revealed how they use these fences, usually from the kind help of one of their drivers. All the teams seem to kind of roughly approach the use of the floor fences the same way. As regulated, they're a single curve relative to the Z plane, which apparently means multi-radius only in one direction. These perform multiple functions, including channeling air out to the side and creating vortices. The greatest difference I see between the teams is how well they are able to integrate the design. For example, the Ferrari is particularly well integrated with the chassis, floor, fences in a simple and obviously effective way. The Red Bull on the other hand seems to be throwing complexity at the problem, but they seem to be able to keep up with it. It would be two very different cultures that go into creating these differences. At the other end of the scale is Aston's first car, that had what I would consider a low integration of the floor and chassis but apparently they have been working on Red Bull's concept from November. So what do I mean by integrated design? It's mostly about an area starting from above the bib and mid section of the floor, and then this section interfaces with the chassis and floor at this particular point, on the Ferrari that is. Almost everyone else has a unique solution in this area, but the early Ferrari had this point of convergence that no one else really had or has. For me, this provided a point of reference that I could get a nice hook into the design and glean an understanding. Generating a car from scratch was just too much for me. Kudos for those who did. So the floor fence's primary role is to control the shape and volume of the air entering the floor. Setting the models up with and without the fences side by side, the fundamental flow structure does not change significantly. The air that enters under the front wing impacts most part of the car. This includes the floor and side pods. Isolating the air that impacted the floor and lower side pods, we can see that this is from the same volume. There is a high pressure volume entering both floors. This pushes air out to the side. The fences are creating specific high pressure volumes between each of the outer three fences indicated by the darker yellow. Then between the inner fence and the chassis is a strong low pressure volume which continues along the floor. Corresponding to this low pressure is additional downforce. On this model, the centre of pressure of the body is moved forwards by half a metre, and downforce is increased by 18%, resulting in an overall 5% shift in the centre of pressure forwards. Essentially, the inner fence is acting like an underfloor wing. This characteristic plot along the centre line gives evidence of this by showing a difference here. As with any aerodynamic device caused by a pressure difference, it will shed a vortex. In this case, it is a rather strong one that flows right down the floor tunnels. It doesn't last as long as I would have thought here, probably because this is the third simulation. It is likely that teams would have these run into the diffuser's exit. Apparent with this scene is the high pressure air at the beginning of the floor that is pushed out to the sides, both with and without fences. One thing that this illustrates is the distribution of mass flow rate across the floor's inlet. Without the fences there is significantly more air entering and accelerating into the diffuser, seen as high velocity red. Then the other thing is the mass flow diverted out to the side of the car. Obviously there is more with the fences. As we continue around to look at the side, it can be seen that the air off the side pods becomes more of an influence. But the air off the side pods and out of the floor are clearly working together. Such that now there is a large rotating mass of air at the side. It's a little bit more prominent with the fences, but there isn't a huge difference. So now we can at least get an idea of one of the uses of the floor fences. They're acting like a wing. However, if there is one thing about contemporary Formula 1 aerodynamics, it is, if an aerodynamic device is doing one thing, it is also doing another thing. Seeing the images of the Red Bull and Ferrari's floor at Monaco, they are adding complexity to these fences. Then looking down the floor, there are bits and pieces working with the fundamental vortex flow structure seen here. That is, the large vortex travelling along the tunnels will be at least preserved by these and likely enhanced by them with this coupling the front and rear of the floor. Looking at these models from underneath, we can get a better idea of how the front and rear of the floor interacts. Swapping to a different format for a bit, because line integral convolution, these lines show how air passes over the surface. 
Now the impact of the inner floor fences becomes much more clear, particularly how far the vortex reaches down the floor. Similarly with the wall shear stress map, these same structures can be seen pulling on the surface. Though with this you can't see where the downforce is created. Here, the brighter colour, the more air is pulling on the surface, and they are the important bits. Here the vortex travelling off the inner fence is indicated by the green strip. It can be seen again that this doesn't go any distance into the diffuser. And the thing is, with the vortex rotating the air, it contributes to the mass flow rate. It is therefore equivalent to increasing the size of the mass flow rate in the diffuser. In this case the vortex detaches and there is a mess in the low energy air purple patches meaning that there isn't a lot happening here. A bit of turbulence but nothing structured. That pool of purple after the plank says it is still a problem despite the addition of the vortex generators. It initially helped but then again I also added cuts at the side which also helped reduce the turbulence. It seems that the volume of air when the fences were added has restricted the amount of air into the diffuser resulting in the rest of the purple map to the surface. Adding streamlines to the floor cut isolates this air exactly. It doesn't really show much difference under the floor. However, it is a bit easier with these streams to see where the air comes from. Following them above the floor, you can see that they start quite high up on the side pod. Interestingly, they pass over the side pods undercut, but this is a pretty ugly part of the model. Wrapping this up, the fences are there to create performance acting as a wing at the beginning of the floor. This would make up for some of the lost downforce from the high front wing. Like any wing, it sheds a vortex downstream that sits in the floor's tunnels that is intended to exit through the diffuser. The side of the floor is less important than I initially thought, or at least the midsection is. As the floor and rear wheel become closer, the floor edge becomes more important. However, the diffuser in this configuration isn't really working that well. So rather than seeing how the floor edge modifications work, I think the diffuser needs fixing.